So this topic is pretty similar to um, circular motion. There are many concepts that uh, will be carried forward um, here as well. So let's just start from the basics of gravitational fields and gravitational field lines. Uh, Hassan, what is your prior understanding? What do you understand by gravitation? Uh, it's the force that toward, towards it's the force towards the center of Earth that pulls the body towards the ground. So force center of Earth that pulls objects towards the um to, towards the center. So acha. Okay, gravitation is my zen for another objects being pulled towards the earth, towards the surface. But you know what? Gravity exists between every object, every object that it exists, even between uh, maybe your laptop and your uh, the table on which the laptop is placed, even between your mobile phone and the surface on which the particular object is placed. So gravity exists between everything in nature. But it's not significant when the objects are small, when the mass is lesser. This force becomes significant as the masses increase. For example, when we talk about the planets, when we talk about Earth, that is when you can experience gravity because of the um, increased mass. So first of all, gravitational field lines are lines that are used to represent gravitational field. What is a field? A field is any area around a force any region around a force. So for, for instance, if this is a magnet, all right, uh, and this region around a magnet is where, where the, the yeah, where the force would be experienced. So this is magnetic field, all right? Similarly, if let's say this is the surface of Earth, so this entire area, the, I mean, even before atmosphere, this is this entire thing. Let's let's say this surface, this line over here, is where the effect of gravity becomes lesser. So this is where this entire region here, underneath this line and above the surface of Earth, is the gravitational field, is where you can experience the effect of this force. So gravitational field is basically the area around the mass, or you could say the region around that mass. For instance, if this is Earth, so we're specifying this region around Earth as a place where you can experience the gravitational force. This is gravitational field. Field lines are basically uh, used to represent gravitational field. So I'm drawing these field lines. You see, in you just told that gravity acts towards the center of the Earth. So these field lines are basically representing the type of force, all right, that gravitational force acts towards the center of the object. In this case, the object is Earth. So arrows, they show the direction of field. So these arrows represent direction of field, all right. And the spaces between these lines, for example, ye wali jo spacing hai in lines with the lines the spacing represents the strength of the field. All right. So we've studied two characteristics of field lines, the, their arrows and um, the spacing. Eight second, hold on. So now another statement that we can make by looking at this is the entire Earth's mass is concentrated at its center. The mass acts towards the center. So the center is where the mass is concentrated. Mass is concentrated 
at the center. Exactly. This is why this is known as the center of mass of the object. point mass This concept of point mass is basically it represents, it elaborates on the idea of concentration of mass at a single point in an object. So this is why Earth can be called a point uh, mass as well. Gravitational field is the region or space where mass experiences the gravitational force. This is the exact definition of gravitational field. All right, we're moving on to the Newton's law of gravitation now. If I just told you that the force of gravity becomes significant when the object's masses increase. So we're assuming these are two point masses and these are, they could be any planets maybe, okay? So, this is where the entire mass of the both of these objects is concentrated at. And this is the distance by which the masses are separated. I mean, you'll obviously be considering the radii over here. And this is the entire distance from one radius to the other, the distance by which these two masses are uh, separated. And considering that the mass mass, this is capital M, this is small m here. And so force of gravity between these two masses, obviously there's a force of attraction between these two masses because of the uh, point masses, the, the, that, that particular force can be represented to this equation F equals G M N over R square. Now this G is the gravitational constant This mass is I mean, the mass of the um, of object one, maybe. First mass, and this is second mass. This is the distance. R is basically the distance between the two objects. And this is, and F is the force of gravity. Gravitational constant has a value of 6.67 times 10 raised to the power of negative 11 Newton meter kgs negative this is a constant value it always remains the same so yes sir clear okay. let's assume certain values and solve this one as an example um values hum rakh lete hain acha sir ye jo distance hai does this include the radius okay sir yes it no no it includes both the radius radius yeah okay okay has it clear ho jaye Some value is zoomed at that. Let's say this small m is um, 2000 kg and the capital M over here is 4000 kg. And the distance by which they're separated is maybe 1000 meters. Obviously, these values are definitely not realistic in 1000 meters. Just across the the gravity is missing totally just for the sake of example. So we'll simply plug in the values. 6.67 times 10 to the power of negative 11. Ab jo zada wale, this is the capital M. 4,000, 2,000, 
R square thousand square and you'll get the answer by solving this. This is just how you're gonna plug in the values to solve this equation. There are certain, there's some other details that we need to understand regarding this equation. First of all, F is inversely proportional to the square of distance. This is the first relationship. And F is directly proportional to the masses, either the capital M or the small M. So as the masses increase, the force of gravity becomes more significant. This is what I've, what I've been saying since the very beginning. And this is how you can prove the statement. As the masses would increase, the force would also increase. If the masses decrease, the force also decreases. If R squared increases, the force would decrease. If R squared decreases, the force would increase. Inversely proportional relationship. Remember, we're not talking about the distance. We're talking about the square of distance over here. So it varies with the square every time, right? So obviously, if you move away from Earth, if you move away, the distance would increase and the force would become weaker. So on huge distances, the force becomes weaker. Right? This is why you go from Earth very far. So gravity ka jo effect is weak. Yeah? If you enter the outer space, you won't be attracted to Earth anymore. Why? Because this relationship explains that theory. The greater the distance, the less is the effect of that force. Okay. Let's write down the exact wordings of the law of gravitation of Newton. So this law states that any two point masses attract each other with a force that is directly proportional to the product of their masses and is inversely proportional to the square of their separation. This is the Newton's law of gravitation. And obviously this wordings are explained through this formula here, GMM over R square. Any questions so far? No, sir, clear. point masses because we're just looking at the center of masses of these objects. Look at this diagram here. What if this is Earth and assuming this is where a person is standing? So agar if we're let's say supposed to find the force of gravity between this person and the surface of Earth, so this is going to be the center of mass of Earth and this is going to be the center of mass roughly for this figure. So jo aapka distance hai, the separation, jo R hai, it will be between these two points, right? Between the two center of masses. So this is right. what you need to consider. Let's, let's call this as distance A, distance B, distance A from the center of mass of the person till the Earth and distance B is from the surface of Earth till the center of mass of Earth. You add A and B to get the separation. All right. Now the next concept is of gravitational field strength. So gravitational field strength is represented by G. 
and you already know the value that's 9.81 meter per second square gravitational acceleration basically or it's 9.81 newton kg negative one okay so gravitational field strength is force per unit mass basically so the formula for g is f over m and the word to word definition is also um, that it's force per unit mass on a small object at any point. So, uh, uh, it is. Can you that? Uh, uh, aapki bhi nahi aare. Can you speak it out? Uh, Asan, can you hear me? Gee, Hassan, can you hear me? So, all right, F over M is the formula for gravitation field strength. This is what I was telling. Um, force per unit mass. I was about to write the definition of this as well, that gravitational field strength. Um, It's the gravitational force exerted per unit mass. Yeah. Per unit mass on a small object placed at that point. All right. So um, you can rearrange this formula to make F the subject as well, and it's going to become mg, uh, the equation of weight, basically. Um, let's equate, because you see, this is F is equal to mg, and F is equal to g, mm over r squared. We've also started with this formula. So we can equate these two formulas. mg is equal to g, mm over r squared. Let's eliminate the m's. So gravitational field strength is also equal to G M over R square. Yeah. This is another formula for it. All right. Yes, Claire. Okay. Um, remember gravitational field strength is not a constant. It decreases as radius increases. And this 9.81 value is only near earth. So, because if you look at this equation, R ka increase hona, G ka decrease hona, there's, a, there's an inversely proportional relationship between the square of separation and gravitational field strength. This 9.81 value is only a uh, somewhat constant value near the surface of Earth. All right. So, this means that when the distance double ho hoga, this field strength would decrease by a factor of four because we're talking about the square of radius. All right. So let's look at this example question here. The question says, uh, radius given hai. radius of earth is 6,400 kilometers. The gravitational field strength is 9.81 meter per second square near the surface of earth. You need to use this information to determine the mass of Earth and its mean density. So you're asked to find the mass of Earth and its mean density. Achha. So first up, uh, we know the radius, we know the gravitational field strength. So hum log, uh, let's use this formula. G is equal to Gm over R square. Yahan pe G is 9.81. Capital G is 6.67 .6 times 10 to the power of negative 11. Uh, M, this is the mass of Earth. Unknown radius is 6,400. Co, you're going to convert it into mass, okay? So it's 6.4 times 10 to the power of 6 squared. Uh, achha. So iske baad isko, let's use a calculator to solve this. Ye rearrange, okay, chala gaya, 9.81. 
टाइम सिक्स पॉइंट फोर टाइम सिक्स पावर ऑफ सिक्स सर रेडियस सिक्सटी फोर हंड्रेड है यस सिक्सटी फोर हंड्रेड लेकिन हमने उसको मास में कन्वर्ट किया तो इट्स सिक्स पॉइंट फोर टाइम टेन रेस पावर ऑफ सिक्स या तो इसका आंसर आ रहा है सिक्स टाइम टेन रेस पावर ऑफ ट्वेंटी फोर के जी ये आ गया आपका मास ऑफर पहला पहली चीज सॉल्व हो गई फॉर डेंसिटी आपको पता है मास ऑफ वॉल्यूम और अब वॉल्यूम कहाँ से आएगा बिकॉज वी टॉकिंग अबाउट अ स्फेरिकल ऑब्जेक्ट सो वॉल्यूम ऑफ स्फेर रेडियस आपको पता है आप इसके अंदर सिंपली प्लग इन द वैल्यूज वॉल्यूम आ जाएगा डिवाइडेड बाय द मास एंड यू गेट द आंसर फॉर डेंसिटी अब इसी में वी आर लुकिंग एट ए ग्राफ ऑफ फोर्स अगेंस्ट रेडियस अगेन आई एम राइटिंग डाउन द फॉर्मूला जी इज इक्वल टू जी एम ओवर आर स्क्वायर वेर जी इज इनवर्सली प्रोपोर्शनल टू आर स्क्वायर एंड एफ इज इज इक्वल टू जी एम एम ओवर आर स्क्वायर where f is also inversely proportional to r square so whether you keep f on the on one of the axes or g it's it's going to be the graph is going to be the same because we're talking about force against radius so iska matlab ye hai ki agar let's say yahan pe force f hai to radius aapka originally to r hai um pe 2r hai this is how the radius increases 3r 4r aur yahan pe force aapke paas decrease ho rahi hai f by two, f by four, f by nine. ठीक है तो f is at r, f by two is at two r, f by three is at f by sorry three r at f by four and four r at f by nine. This is how the graph would look like. As force decreases, the radius increases by um, square. पर यहां पे फोर आर होना चाहिए यहां पे एट आर होना चाहिए अब सही ठीक है फोर्स एक एक स्टेप नीचे जा रही है आपकी और रेडियस आपका बाय स्क्वायर इंक्रीज होता जा रहा है इनवर्सली प्रोपोर्शनल ग्राफ अच्छा तो वी कैन आई कीप अर लेक्चर टू दिस पॉइंट अभी this is a lot of information for you today so let me know if there's any question from today's lecture no aaj ke mein se to koi question nahi hai